Hey guys, Chance here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, here to show you our Honda XR650L bike build. So I'm super excited about this XR650L bike build. This is a super popular bike from Honda. They've been around and unchanged really since 1993. And it's a great platform to start with for an adventure bike. Um, this bike was designed when Honda was the king of the Baja 1000. And so you've got some awesome components. However, there are a few things that need changing and that's why I did this bike build. But first, let's give a little overview of the bike in stock form and what it compares to. So starting off with the motor, we have a 649cc air-cooled motor. It's a great smooth motor, lots of power. Uh, it's got a five-speed transmission. It does highway speeds quite nicely, and first gear is low enough to where you can do some more technical riding. This bike also has some decent suspension. It's fully adjustable front and rear, and it's got plenty of travel. However, that does make for a taller bike. The seat height on this bike is about 37 inches compared to a DR650 or a KLR650, which is a few inches shorter. Um, the weight on this bike is a little bit lighter than those two, about 346 pounds. That makes it about 20 pounds lighter than the DR and about 100 pounds lighter than the KLR, KLR650. So for off-road riding, this is a great candidate. However, it's a tall bike, plenty of ground clearance, and for those shorter riders, it might be a little harder to handle or even touch the ground. One downside to this bike in stock form is the tank. It comes with a metal tank that holds about 2.8 gallons. That's pretty small compared to the DR that has three and a half gallons, and then the KLR that has a little over six gallons. So that was one improvement that definitely needed to be made. So I've had a great time working with this bike, getting to know it. This is actually my personal bike, and so I wanna show you everything I've done to it to make it an awesome adventure bike. So starting from the ground up, every adventure bike needs some good tires. So I threw some Dunlop D606 tires on there. They give awesome traction and they last a long time. Inside the tires, I have some Bridgestone ultra heavy duty tubes. Um, we encounter a lot of flats on adventure riding and you're usually stranded out in the middle of nowhere when you're changing those. With these tubes, I hope to minimize any chances of flats. Along with tubes, I had to add some rim locks. These bikes don't come stock with rim locks, so it was definitely an upgrade from stock, especially with all the power and weight that we're dealing with. Moving up from there, I've added a Ricochet skid plate. It gives great coverage, and along with that skid plate, I've added the Tusk skid plate foam. It helps minimize debris and dirt from getting inside the skid plate, and also helps minimize some sound. From there, I added the Tusk magnetic drain bolts. This bike holds most of the oil inside the frame, and so there's a few places for drain bolts. I put one inside the frame, and also one inside the crankcase. I also swapped out the stock chain for a primary drive gold X-ring chain and then upgraded my front sprocket to a primary drive upgraded front sprocket. This front sprocket is much better than the OE or any aftermarket sprocket because of the thickness. Most aftermarket and OEM sprockets, they're too thin for that counter shaft and they'll ride on just a small section of those splines causing premature wear. But the primary drive upgraded front sprocket is the perfect fix for that. It sits on the entire spline section of the counter shaft helping to prevent any kind of premature wear and some expensive repairs. Another item of protection that I've added to the bike is the Tusk brake lever saver. It's the cable connecting my brake pedal to my skid plate. The brake pedal on this bike is extremely long and is prone to being torn away from the bike and leaving me stranded without a brake. So this cable gives me peace of mind knowing that my brake pedal is gonna stay where it needs to. Another must have upgrade are foot pegs. The stock foot pegs are extremely small and hurt your feet. So I've upgraded to the IMS Rally foot pegs. They're extremely long, big, nice platform, plenty of grip, and they're super comfortable on those long adventure rides. We've also added the JNS Engineering side stand foot. With this big heavy bike and all this luggage, it's pretty easy for the kickstand to sink into the ground and drop your entire bike. So this side stand foot gives me a nice big platform, holds the bike up, and I don't have to worry about my bike tipping over. 
Okay, so the suspension on this bike in stock form is okay, but it is pretty soft. So if you're a bigger guy or carrying any kind of luggage, you definitely need to upgrade. So I've upgraded both my front fork springs and my shock spring to handle that extra weight. We have all these springs available on our website, so be sure and check that out. Another must-have upgrade for this bike, especially if you're doing any kind of off-road or adventure riding, is a foam air filter. The stock filter, it's a paper style filter over a metal canister. It's big, bulky, and it's hard to carry a spare if you need one. So I've upgraded to a twin air air filter. This allows me to clean the filter if needed, and I can also pack a spare in my luggage, and it's pretty small when needed. From there, I wanted to work on jetting. The stock jetting on this motorcycle, it's pretty lean from the manufacturer. I had a hard time warming it up. I had some long run times on choke and it was down on power. So to fix that, I threw in a dyno jet jet kit. Um, it allowed me to jet it for my altitude and it does awesome. It got rid of those long run times on choke and it gives me a lot more power. Now moving over to the exhaust, I ended up wrapping the stock header with the Helix Racing Products exhaust wrap. And then I ended up throwing on an FMF Q4 silencer. This saved me a ton of weight over stock. The stock silencer is quite large and heavy. And then it also allows my bike to breathe a little bit better, giving me a little, better, giving me a little bit better performance. And as for updating the look of this bike, while the front forks were off my bike, I ended up routing the main wire harness from underneath the triple clamp up and over the top of that bottom triple clamp, giving me a little extra room to mount a different fender because that front fender is quite large and a little outdated. So I threw the Polysport UFX front fender on there. It's a good looking fender and it gives the bike a nice updated look. However, I did have to add some spacers to the back mounting bolts in order for the rear part of the fender to clear the frame. Another thing with the front fender, I did have to take the Speedo cable guide off the OEM front fender and re-rivet it onto this fender. Okay, now for a must have for adventure riding. You've gotta have a way to carry all your luggage. And so I've added the Tusk pannier racks with top rack to this bike. They're very durable, made out of steel, and they allow me to carry all my luggage that I need. And another necessary item for this bike that actually comes with these pannier racks are the subframe supports. The subframe on this bike is pretty weak and if you're a larger rider carrying a passenger or any type of luggage, you run the risk of bending your subframe. Tusk has incorporated these subframe supports into their pannier racks and top rack kit in order to support that subframe and allow your bike to last longer. And to go along with these racks, I'm carrying luggage from Nelson Rig. I have the Sierra Dry Saddlebags, they give me plenty of space for all my luggage and then for the top bag. I have the Ridge Roll Dry Bag. It's a 30 liter bag, it's waterproof, and I carry all my camping equipment in there. With the rear luggage, um, up front I actually have a Wolfman Enduro tank bag. Uh, with this big tank, it doesn't allow a lot of room for a big tank bag, so the Wolfman Enduro tank bag is actually the perfect size for this bike. Okay, and since I've upgraded the look of the front end of the bike, I had to upgrade the rear of the bike. The rear tail light, license plate mount, it's quite large and not very appealing. So I removed all that and I replaced the tail light with the Firepower replacement tail light. It's actually a really nice sealed unit that actually fits right inside of this socket on the rear fender. Along with that, I've added the Tusk license plate mount and the Tusk license light to help light up the license plate. Another way to upgrade the looks of the bike are LED turn signals. The stock turn signals are big, they get in the way, and they're usually broken by the end of a ride. So I've upgraded to the Tusk mini stock LED turn signals. They give a nice sleek look to the bike and they help draw less power from the stator. Now for adventure riding, you need good lighting. So JNS Engineering helped us out with their LED headlight and their dual auxiliary light mount. And with the dual auxiliary light mounts, I've added some Trailtech Equinox lights they give me plenty of light to help light up the trail. While adventure riding, I don't want to be stranded anywhere. So I've upgraded the stock battery to an anti-gravity battery with restart technology. This battery is a super smart battery, very powerful, and the technology it has is quite amazing. If for any reason the battery does drain itself, 
and leave me stranded. It actually has a button on top where I can press it, it jump starts itself and allows me to start the bike and resume my ride. It's a nice safety feature. Okay, now moving up to the controls of the bike and more of those creature comforts. I've added the Rock Speed FX Pro offset risers to help get those handlebars out of my lap and raise them up a little bit. I've added the Tusk Chub handlebars. They're 118, nice, strong aluminum. So next I've got a few items from Tusk. I've got some dual compound MX grips. Underneath I've got some heated grip kits. Along with those, I have the D-Flex Pro Adventure handguards. These handguards are a full wraparound handguard, give great protection. And this Adventure kit includes a spacer. The spacer gives more room for your hand when wearing bigger gloves, and it gives you more room for those adventure bike lovers. We also have the 12 volt power socket. This allows me to charge my cell phone, my GPS, or any other accessories I have. From there, we upgraded the stock mirrors to the double take adventure mirrors. These mirrors are awesome. They're almost unbreakable, and they're quite stable at higher speeds. The stock mirrors didn't last long, so it was a definite must have. Okay, now to wrap things up, no adventure bike is complete without a big tank and a nice comfortable seat. So I've added the Cherubis 5.8 gallon tank. This thing's a beast. Takes me everywhere I want to go. And to handle all those extra miles I can put in, I've installed the Seat Concepts seat cover and foam kit. The seat is super soft, it's comfortable, gives me a nice riding position up front. But for those highway sections, I can sit back and relax. And for those cold weather rides, I have actually installed a Tusk seat heater. In order to handle all these electrical accessories, we threw in the Electro Sport Stator. This gives me a little extra output just to be safe. That way I'm not scared of running out of juice out in the middle of nowhere. And of course, on an adventure bike, I've got to look good. So I've thrown on some attack graphics. They did awesome covering up those big open spaces and it helped set me apart. Okay guys, that's it. That's my bike build on the XR650L. If you have any questions or comments about this bike build, let us know below. And if you like content like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product videos, how-tos, and bike builds like this. I'm Chance with the Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching.